Welcome back to a short edition of the SprintCarUnlimited.com podcast presented by Wicked Energy Gum. I'm Jeremy Elliott, joined by Ryan Hand. A little bit different this week, but, you know, we obviously with the Easter holiday, a lot of stuff going on, but we didn't want to leave people without our picks. Yeah, no. I think that's what it comes down to, no, the picks. Holy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, after last week, you might want to forget about it, but. It's, it's ebb it and is. flow. It is. Honestly, it is. I was explaining to a guy today how it like, after 41 races, actually it was Forbrook. I was talking to Forbrook today and uh, he said, <laughs> I was telling him about this little segment we do. And I said, after 41 races, we're only six spots apart. Yeah. And like the other two stats were only two, two apart at the most. I said, it's almost crazy. Well, and here's the kind of the funny thing with that. You know, people say, oh, well, you've only picked eight, right? I've only picked six. But if you add them together, it's 14. I mean, we're over, we're about 34% on winners. Yeah. And top fives, we're, I mean, I'm at 22, you're at 20. So a little over 50% of the time I'm in the top five and you're right at about 50%. So that's not bad. When Donnie starts winning, will be the rate will go up. <laughs> Joe Von Schrilt said that uh, to me. Yeah, you know. So, well, we're gonna dive back in, right in, and, and get going here. It's gonna be about a fifteen minute segment. We're just gonna talk about some of the storylines going into this weekend. Uh, we're gonna do some picks, obviously. We'll do that after the storyline. So, uh, obviously, we're gonna start in the road. The World of Outlaws were off over the Easter holiday. Uh, how do you feel about that? Do you like that? Yeah, I think it's good. I think as much as they race, I think a break or two is not a bad thing for, especially when they're on the West coast that long, them guys, some of them guys are need to get back to their families and see their families after. I mean, some of them have left Florida and haven't been home for six, seven weeks, eight weeks. I agree with you. I, I think it's, I think really um, everybody should be off. Although I will say when, when I was younger now, of course this was, I don't know, maybe 30 years ago. <laughs> uh, you know, you, Penn National used nah, to open. I knew where you're going with that because <laughs> I I couldn't wait for the Easter Sunday. And it was a huge crowd. Yeah, forget the Easter egg hunt when I was a kid. I wanted to go to Penn National. I wanted to go to Penn National <laughs> yeah. Church Easter egg hunt. Exactly. Penn National. That no, was your order. The Easter egg hunt was out. <laughs> we'll get the Penn National early. Well, the World of Outlaws are back in action. They start uh, Friday at Lake Ozark of the Ozarks Speedway. Then you have I-55 on Saturday, and then they have Jacksonville Speedway in Illinois on Sunday. I think one of the storylines, obviously, is Donnie Schatz. He has one win so far. Did a little calculating in our for our top 50 that I run every Monday. He is 12th in laps led on the World of Outlaw circuit with 14. Ouch. I didn't realize that. How about that stat? Yeah. Oh, by the way, he's only two points yeah, out of the lead. <laughs> he's about to take over the points, I guess, huh? Yeah. We say that every week, but it hasn't. Honestly, it hasn't gotten strung out yet. It's been a good battle. It's it it has kept it interesting, but it's Midwest now. Yeah, I think all bets are off. I think Donnie's going to get. I think he's going to heat up here. That's just my prediction. So, but it's still it's a storyline going into this weekend. Mm -hmm. Fourteen laps is not very many. No, but obviously he only won one race as well. So you're not going to lead that many laps if you only won one race. This is true. Uh, we talked about the point battle, Brad Sweet. Leads by two over Donnie and six over Darren Pittman, who got a new crew member this week. Scott yep. Vogelsong is going to be with the team. Uh, people remember him from uh, Tim Cady when he was with the Lunster car, mm -hmm. and he's been with numerous teams over the years. Yeah, I've known Scott since uh, he worked back here in PA a number of years ago, and his last gig he was with was uh, Mark Dobmeyer's 13 car. So good for Scott. And obviously, like we said, back to the Midwest. I think things change when you get back to the Midwest, albeit I don't think the top three guys change. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Brad's still so consistent. I think Darren's going to be good this year. Donnie's obviously Donnie. Now, Lake of the Ozark, I mean, that 41 car. Home, home court there. A little bit of home, yeah. home cooking for gravel in yeah. the Jason Johnson racing team. So it'll be interesting to see how he fares in the Midwest. We're going to save our picks to the end. It's fine. So you can digest it. So then you know the order. You can't accuse me of setting it up. Or, That's right. Or well, you still set it up. So I Come on. <laughs> and you know you're picking first this week, so. Yeah. <laughs> just saying. You, ee, ee, just saying. Get that dig in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, just saying. The All-Stars are back in action. They lost Attica last week, mm -hmm. the two-day show. They've condensed it, made it a one-night show on Friday night, and then they go to Wayne County on Saturday. I think the big thing is, can they get a race in? 
I mean, the, the weather does not look good for Friday. I mean, we'll talk about that later for Williams Grove, but things just not looking good. No, the weather has not been very cooperative. I just saw on my way here, the late models rained out, the Lucas Oil late models rained out like two shows in the Midwest. I think they were actually in Illinois or something, so that's not very favorable for the, the Midwest. So ugh, rain, rain, go away. Yeah, and it's it's not going away. I think one of the storylines with the All-Stars is the Ohio guys and maybe if any PA guys go out there. We've heard the rumblings of Dietrich possibly going out there. I don't think that happens. Maybe a Twitter poll could get him out there. Maybe. Yeah, you're you're <laughs> you're on that Twitter poll. Yeah. Uh, Got him the port last week. That's true. It did get him. 6,900 to win race. So hey, I don't think that's know. what got him the port. No. Because I called okay. him on the phone about it because I got sick of reading about it. All right. But we'll we'll discuss that when we get to Central PA a little bit. But Tim Schaefer is a guy that invades and does well. Yeah. Uh, buddy Kofoid's been good at Attica. Your boy, Buddy. And he's going to the NRA race at Eldora on Saturday. I don't understand that. Wow. I mean, he's foregoing Wayne County to run NRA. At least that's what it looks like on social media. Hmm. So, you know, uh, and the other thing, Reitzel versus the field. I mean... Aaron's been fast. He came from way back after blowing a motor at Virginia. Then yeah. comes at Port Royal, solid top five. He's been fast, just things haven't worked out to how get about, the win. How about Knoxville last week? I mean, 12th to second? He looked like going down the back straightaway, especially because of the camera angle. It looked like everybody had their parachutes out, and he was just like trucking. If you get a caution, does he beat Brown? Uh, it, it would be a good race because Brown's going to leave the top. He's going to go to the top of one and two. Yeah. And that's where Reitzel was the strongest down the back straightaway. I'd say it would have been a good shootout. The other, and, and I mentioned this on in top 50 as well. If you're looking for a guy to pull the upset at the Knoxville Nationals, mm -hmm. Aaron Reitzel's the guy. Yeah, because I have a feeling with their shop in Knoxville, any chance to rain out or something on Saturday night, I'd say they're probably going to be pounding Knoxville. The other thing is, too, he runs well there. He's a top oh. five car last year. Yes, He's very strong there. He gets around there well. And didn't the year before, he was hard charger, yeah. I think. Yep. So Aaron Wright's very good at Knoxville, which makes sense because he's very good at Port Royal as well. Mm -hmm. So definitely watch the All-Stars. ASCS, Eagle Raceway, US 36. Now, they start tonight at Eagle. Okay. And then they have a TBA for Sunday, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Wow, that's a late. <laughs> that's a late. Yeah, I, I don't. I, I can't believe they're going to race I, on a Sunday. I, hey. With a TBA just now? It's Shoot. been TBA for a while, but uh, first races of the year for ASCS. They had their openers rained out at Devil's Bowl. It seems like everybody gets rained out at Devil's Bowl. Texas in the spring is terrible. It's like California in the spring. <laughs> well, California this year in the spring, that's for yeah. sure. But ASCS, who's going to run with ASCS? I think that's the big question. I mean, does Sam Hayfertip continue to run with him? He mentioned about doing more 410 racing this year. And then you have guys, you know, you have different teams coming in, going out. So I think it'll be interesting to see who decides to run ASCS and then who gets hot because they come to Central PA next week. Yeah, and I know, like, uh, just talking to Sam, he struggled last year. He didn't even make the show at Seals Grove. So I think those guys come here and it might shake some things up because of the unknown for them guys here well the other thing is is it as popular as it was last year yeah they had some good crowds last year it'll be exciting and interesting to see what we got you know just to see it did, did the novelty wear off does and with the weather i mean do you make the tow from wherever it is you're coming from which most of them are coming from oklahoma texas in and around that area do they make that long tow to pa I think those guys are vested in the series, so I would say that you know they're going to get tow money either way. I would I would think so. We'll see. Your favorite sprint car challenge tour. We're going to California. They're at Petaluma Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Bunch of storylines here. Shane Golubic leads the points. The top five are separated by thirteen points. It's Kyle Hurst second, Tim Cading, Tony Gualda, Joey Bats loves that. Yep. And Mitchell Facinto, your guy. I, I've taken him a few times. <laughs> so all separated by 13 points. I mean, look, it's early, mm -hmm. but you definitely want to put your footprint on the SEC T title chase. Yeah. And I, I can't stop thinking Hurst is going to be the guy that comes out on top because 
he always does. He's driving the Tyner car, obviously, the 94. But then Tim Cading's lurking. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of good guys out in California because the difference between 410 and 360, there isn't one. And Four- Gall- Golubic's kind of like Mr. Consistency. He just always yep. there every night. Like, right. Top five every night. Yeah, he's not. He's second in the SprintCarUnlimited.com hard charger chase out there, which is seven hundred and fifty dollars to the person who passes the most cars. Nice. Uh, Justin Sanders leads it. Oh wow! And Justin will be going to Petaluma this week. So there's, it's like I said, between four tens and three sixties, there's no difference because the same guys run them. Yeah. Unlike other areas of the country, so it'll be interesting to see what happens at Petaluma, uh, just how that goes. Fast series. Running a Sunday show at Kokomo. Kokomo. People love to go to Kokomo, though. It's a great racy track. Great. I, I, great <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if they have a pile of cars. Well, it's going to be a battle between Jacksonville Speedway in Illinois and Kokomo in Indiana. Yeah. But I think Kokomo is going to get your all-star guys that maybe are staying out there. That over the week. I know Brock Zierfoss has possibly talked about going to Kokomo. Never know where the Indy race parts cars are going to go. I mean, let's face it. Parker Price Miller loves him some Kokomo. I'm pretty sure they're going to Kokomo by the looks of stuff I saw today. Both cars. Geo. That could have a really good feel. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, does... I like watching races from there, too. Ooh. Oh, there it's, it's one of the yeah. few tracks I think Donnie isn't good at. Yeah, that's surprising. Because there's two lanes there, which is yeah all you can ask for in a, in a racetrack. And, I mean... <laughs> The top gets way out. The bottom's like around the hub, and you can just keep it right. tight, and it's just good racing there. Oh, don't worry. He finishes in the top five. Yeah. <laughs> always. He always does. So we're going to bring it back home to Central PA. Uh, big weekend. Williams Grove kicks things off tomorrow night. Maybe. Maybe. The weather looks bad again. 90% Man, they, during the day. They honestly can't catch a break. No, if they get banged out tomorrow, that's four straight and five of the first seven. I don't mm. know how you can make money like that. And mm. what people don't realize, let's face it, they have full-time employees. Yeah. People don't realize that they have an office person, they have maintenance people. Yeah. You still have bills. Have to tap into the National Open Fund. <laughs> <laughs> or the first two weeks fund. Or the first two weeks fund, Yeah. But, yeah, they they definitely hit home runs first two weeks. So, um, but honestly, it's it's getting it's getting bad. <laughs> they can't race on Friday night right now. Now, there's been some kind of suggestions on social media, as there always is. Do you reschedule for a Sunday? No, I agree with no. you. No, suicide. It doesn't work. No, never does. The the six people that want it, they'll be there, but they don't have to pay the bill. I agree with you. Uh, I mean, if you have it scheduled from the beginning of the year or say, hey, after this week, look, we're, we're going to look into maybe Sunday rain date where you can get it out a week ahead. Yeah, but you can't do a Sunday rain date for this week. But honestly, I think it's suicide. I really do. I I agree with you. It's and Here's the other thing. When are you going to run them? Sealands Grove runs Sunday. Sunday. The following week, Baps runs the Kevin Gobrek Classic. Yeah. It's getting into the the meat of the season here where you have other races on those Sundays. So what do you do? Doesn't work. No, it does not. On Saturday, we got the double again. We got Lincoln and Port Royal. I think this is the week car counts could become an issue. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, after you spoke of the Western PA guys that were at Port Royal and stuff, I maybe, maybe have to think a little harder about it, but yeah, I would say, but there is the the guys that we talked about, like the Trent Schaefers and them guys, they came out last week. So yeah. the guys that can't run the whole season because of motor, you know, laps and stuff like that, they're starting to appear. And it gets that that gets those numbers back closer to a full field. Twenty three cars for the Weldon Sterner Memorial. Go ahead, I'm gonna let you have the floor. Absurd. Honestly, like my my deal is look, if if you guys want bigger paying races, you gotta support them. Why? Why would a promoter? Why would a promoter put up more money if he's going to have more cars at thirty six hundred to win? Like he'd be out of his mind. However, I'm going to play devil's advocate. I'm not saying I believe this, but more up top, but down through, Port Royal pays Port Royal more. Is better. Port Royal has five ten thousand dollar to win shows, and that doesn't count the Tuscora fifty. Talking to Dietrich last week. 
it was about supporting the track that week in and week out has the higher purse. I understand it. I get what he's saying. And the track time for the Bob Weicker Memorial coming up is two ten thousand dollars to win shows in one weekend. Now, do I buy that? Is Port Royal that hard to get a hold of? You, you, you know more than I do. Uh, it can be tricky. I mean, it uh, obviously it depends on the week, but it probably depends more on if the sixty nine's coming. <laughs> I mean, yeah. you can get a hold of it all you want, but if you're not better than a sixty nine, it doesn't matter how much you got a hold of it. I think you're absolutely one hundred percent. I guess right. my thing is, is I feel like like Danny has as good a shot as anybody at Lincoln, if not better. Uh, to oh, win a absolutely. Race there and to basically be able to double what you could have put in your pocket on Saturday night. I just I was shocked that I was shocked that he went to Port Royal just because of how much success he has at Lincoln. Port Royal had 30 cars last week. It's it's scary. But again, Western PI PA guys, Gary Kreese, uh you had AJ Flick, George Hoball, you had Brock who's going to run in All-Stars. You had uh who else came in? Oh, Jack Sodeman Jr. Yeah. came in. You had a lot of Western PA yeah. guys. I mean, I think you're dropping back into the t- low twenties off of that. Now, do I think they'll pick up Lucas this week? I do. Sixty nine K won't be at so at uh Lincoln. No. So Lincoln where's Ryan Smith go? I think I saw somewhere he's going to port. Okay, so Maybe they cancel each other out. It's going to be interesting over the next two weeks what the car count looks like. I agree with you. The Trenton Schaefer's came out. When does Daryl Stomley come out? When does maybe some of those other guys come out? We haven't seen Troy yet this year. Troy Fraker. That's a good point. He's not made his debut yet. Well, if he does, it's probably waiting for the Grove. He might be yeah. waiting a long yeah. time. Yeah, no kidding. So, But it'll be interesting to see what happens. Port Royal has their open wheel madness i'm interested in the 360s up there Mm -hmm. how many do they get it's a urc show they had 24 last week at silver or at uh, i keep saying silver silver spring sealands grove so i don't i don't know if that's a good car count or not well it's better than it's been at sealands grove oh yeah it was 15 for i I expect i do expect uh to have a sealands grove's not run 360s that night so i expect i expect a good car count i think maybe you'll see some 358 guys possibly venture up Lucas Wolf will probably do Lucas double will do duty. It. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if if Stevie Ryan, B, Ryan, yep. Ryan Smith as well. Stevie B, yeah, Steve Buckwalter. I I would say I would say thirty to thirty five three sixties. You know what? It's, thinking about it, maybe Mark Smith does double duty. Possibly could do. So that helps for ten car count. I, I honestly, you, I can't wait for. I enjoy the all sprint car show. I can't wait I to see too. what the car count is. It's it's kind of like a Knoxville show, a Knoxville weekly show. I agree. And I'm I'm kind of excited about it. If I didn't have a softball tournament to go to, I might venture there. The other story at Lincoln is Brian Monteith has been wretched. Yeah. I talked to him in the pit area last week. Not happy with the car. It has not been good. Uh, he was none too pleased. Now, last week, I guess they have kind of a like a plateau a shelf a shelf at the top of the corner i guess uh anthony macri hooked it anthony was fast again he was coming through the field mm-hmm. and he hooked it and he was gone i mean it, there's Spun nothing out. he could do and it was in front of brian but brian wasn't good anyway he said no didn't matter yeah <laughs> so it's uh, surprising because last year at the end of the year i thought he had a ton of speed like ugh. he he usually his weakness is time trials and he time trialed the whole second half of the year last year i thought he he really improved his time trial. Deal. Yeah, two top fives with the outlaws. Yeah, no, I well usually the outlaw races he struggles right to get top fives because he's got to pass twenty cars to get to tenth <laughs> because he starts so far back because right. he doesn't time trial well. But last year, that last half of the year, he time trialed really well. So I'm surprised. I'm kind of surprised that that they don't have more speed. Agreed. Danny Dietrich's the other story because on Sunday, everything moves to Sealands Grove for the Ray Tilly. Look, the racing was really good there last year. Uh, if you get a chance, pop in the, the video of uh, Danny Dietrich and Lucas Wolf going yeah. at it during the Speed Week show. That should be a selling point right there. Danny Dietrich's going to run Williams Grove, Port Royal, and Sealands Grove. I mean, can anybody slow him down other than the 69K? Because right now, Danny is fast. Yeah, and I don't think anybody else is great. No. Like, like Lucas is kind of just... 
yeah monty it's, it's is that not very good feast or famine you know it's there's the challenge i don't know where the challenge is coming from right now you might get one car really good but like a consistent challenge like i don't know it's it looks like it's danny's world right now yeah and it's sporadic i mean last week at lincoln uh dan shetler set oh. quick time it was, yeah. it was a great lap he finished eighth uh, you have surprises and guys yeah. stepping up but it's not consistently. Uh, Tyler Reeser last week at Port Royal was Looked really great. fast. Looked great. And was was in line for a top five, but then got high and, and caught clipped, the fence. Caught the fence and cut um, a right front. Yep. So Danny's just consistent all the time. I, I think one of the things right now is the Danny's wins have come his early wins have come off the front row, but like this win was really slick. The track was really slick. Right. In his wheelhouse, and he looked good. I mean, he really did. He got through his heat. He started last in his heat. Yeah, he and came run, up through. run second in his heat. So that's a major key for that situation. Now, Port's going to do their double heats this week. Yeah, as if we need that. I I kind of like them. I don't know. Uh, you know what? On a three-division show, when you're going to have 550 305s, I don't. Ah, that's true. There's going to be a lot of 305s. So it's the magical time. It is that time. Golf cart services sponsors our picks, our weekly picks. You're ahead, eight six in the wind department. We won't talk about that. <laughs> I'm ahead in top fives. You're ahead by six spots in. Uh, we won't talk about that. Head either. to head, yeah. Yeah, we're not to talk yeah, about. I that. See how this is going. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's the benefits of being owning the business, the boss, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so to speak. I got it. But uh, we're going to start with the outlaw shows. And who do you got? Uh, I guess I pick it. You get first pick. Lake Ozark. Yeah. Lake Ozark. I know exactly where you're going here. What do you mean you know exactly I know where, you're where going. I'm going? You turn your head. I'll show you where you're going. Turn your head. <laughs> nobody wants. Yeah. Nobody wants to see this angle. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> they don't want to see this. I angle. just showed them who you're picking. Go ahead. Well, you probably said gravel. Yeah. I. I I'm gonna go Brad Sweet. Wow. Because I'm going, I think gravel's still all or not. Still has three top fives only. I just think I think that race is going to be a big race for that team. There, it's going to be. It a is home field. It's going to be the feel good story. It's you do know though the other teams aren't going to lay down. For oh, them. I know that. So, but I also know gravel's pretty badass. So I'm taking gravel. Okay, you take gravel. Mm -hmm. I have sweet. Okay. Federated Auto Parts, which by the way we started a new pro promotion on SprintCarLimited.com. Anybody, we're going to pick one race a week. And our members can pick the top three. If you pick the top three correctly, you get $121. Nice. You got to get the actual top three. You got to dead nut the top three in order. Whew. And this week, it's Federated Auto Parts Raceway at I-55. Rainouts, we, we just... Roll it over. You just no. We're not going to roll it over because that could end up being really expensive yeah, no at kidding. the end of the year. Don't pick. Don't pick Williams Grove as your track. Well, you know we're going to move it around a lot. We're going to go different series. We're going to we're going to shake things up. We're going to give every area. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I like it. Uh, hopefully they get it in this weekend at I fifty five. Who do you got at I fifty five? Shots. I know I went out. Boy, you there. just gave me the field because yep. I there's a couple different guys. That are really, really good there. Um, Logan's good there. Sheldon's good there. Darren Pittman's good there. Yeah, Pittman won last year. I did a little research. Pittman did win last year. It was a rubbered up show. Pittman won a that bunch of rubbered up That was because Sheldon races. got out of the rubber. Yeah. rubber. Mm -hmm. That's my only concern with Sheldon. My concern there is is qualifying. Yeah. It changes as the track goes, depending. Well, you took shots. That's fine. I'm going to take, boy, Logan's been so good lately. He has been, and that's a good track for them. But I don't know if I like the week layoff. Mm. I'm going to go with Darren Pittman at I-55. It's going to come. The, it'll come into rubber eventually. Yeah. Because they usually run like six classes there and redo the track, and it still comes to rubber. So, Jacksonville Speedway. Jacksonville. Whoo! This is a this is a crapshoot for me. Yeah, it's pretty much. I'm going to take Donnie shots on. I got to put a shots in somewhere yeah. for the weekend. I'll take that, Brad. You're taking Sweet. Yeah. Makes sense. Safe bet. Now we're going to move to the All-Stars. Attica, you're up. Attica, Attica, Attica. Tim Schaefer. Oh, you suck. I know. <sighs> Reitzel's Reitzel. really good there. If he finishes, he'll be in good shape. I'm going to take Aaron Reitzel. Wayne County. Mm -hmm. When's Jack Hoddenshield come out? Woo. That, that's his joint. That's his joint. Oh, yeah. 
or Sheldon's, <laughs> so, or or Kyle Larson's. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah but too. Jack is really good yeah, there. Th- this one's hard because Schaefer wins everywhere out there. Mm-hmm. Do I go with? Does Jack come out, or do I? I'll tell you what. I'll make you a deal. If you take Jack and he doesn't come out, you can repick since you let me repick. Yeah, but that'd be his first race. I'm so leery of that. I'm going with Tim Schaefer. Mm-hmm. Boy, this all-star thing's going to look ugly for our picks because I'm going to have to take Reitzel. Yeah, I mean, there's some other guys, though. I think we'll spread that around. No, I, I think that's one of the races that could go. You can get a, a an invader that really – well, Attica as well. I mean, Byron Reed, and I don't think you'll see Byron Reed probably at Wayne, we, no, Wayne, probably Wayne not. County. but. Um, there is a lot of cars that move off it. There's a lot of kids that run. Kale a lot of guys only won at Attica this year off the knob. Yeah. So, but like Wayne County is kind of like the locals are, it's a weird track, man. It's a weird, like we race there a couple times. It, it gets real dirty and dusty. And right. You go out for time trials and you go down the back straightaway and the push truck that just pushed you off is almost <laughs> going as fast as you are. It's kind of weird, but cool. Race is really well. Yes. Races are good there. Going to Cali. Callie. This is, this is, you're up first. I'm up first. You got the field. This is all you, buddy. TK. You suck. I know. I'm going to go Willie Croft. Ooh. I'm going to go Willie. There you go. It's been a... Willie's, Willie's done he's me... He's due. He's done me right there mm-hmm. in the past. And I know when John Westbrook did the show, he took Willie Croft like every week. Really? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Willie was a popular pick. Back to Williams Grove. Uh... Rain, but rain. Yeah, I mean, look, if they run, I I don't know if they will. It's going to be heavy, so it's it's a yellow breeches race, so it's going to be handicapped. So now you got to think. I, I'm going to take Monteith only because I think he's going to start start near the up front. front. Um, probably have to take Raymer. Yeah, that's where I was going to go if I didn't. Mm-hmm. Then the last one, Sealens Grove Speedway, which is now sixty percent chance of rain. Unfortunately, oh jeez, I'm hoping that goes away. That's Ugh. Williams Grove's a lot worse for tomorrow. But who do you got at Sealens Grove? Sealens Grove. I guess I will have to take Dietrich. Ugh. Ugh. You should have lined these up a little differently, Jeremy. No, <laughs> Williams Grove is going to rain out. <laughs> it's all right. Um, <laughs> Lucas is really good. Though. Yeah. No, I, honestly, if I couldn't have had. If I if you would have taken Dietrich, I probably would take Lucas. And it could be who gets out front. Yeah. I'm going to take Lucas. I have there to you take go. Lucas. Gets the win. There it is. That's going to wrap up this special edition of the SprintCarUnlimited.com podcast. Check out SprintCarUnlimited.com for all your sprint car needs throughout the weekend. And we'll be back next week with our regularly scheduled podcast. Stay tuned.